to Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. My name is Julie and I'm here to impart some knowledge to you today via a two minute art tip. And today we have a little bit of an unusual segment for you. Um, we're gonna call this one Ask Julie. Today, you'll notice that the, the backdrop is a little different. We're here shooting in my own studio that's in my own home just to kind of like mix things up and give you a little feel of what my world's like when I'm not um, at Cheap Joe's. Uh, this is where I primarily work. Um, some of you um, have had some interesting questions um, here lately that you've been firing off. And so we wanted to take an opportunity to answer some questions. Sometimes you got questions. Sometimes I got questions. Sometimes I even know the answers. So sometimes we do put these questions out there. Like, what are you interested in hearing about? What would you like to see videos on? Do you have specific questions for me? A lot of times those Q and A kind of responses go out through our Instagram account. We have not only a Cheap Joe's corporate account, but we also have uh, Instagram accounts for each of the individual retail locations that may be near you, which are a wonderful resource so that you can find out about upcoming events, special cool things that are going on. Sometimes I'll be there live demoing, doing, you know, all kinds of different stuff. So um, check in Instagram. It's a great way to find out exactly what's going on um, in all the different areas that uh, where Cheap Joe's lives. So let's answer some questions, shall we? So we got a couple here. How do you control the flow of spray paint? Well, so I'm assuming this means like controlling line weight and eliminating spatter and drips and stuff like that. Some of that has to do with knowing what the appropriate distance is because sometimes if you get too close, you know, it's going to bounce back on you or you'll get like overspray and stuff like that. There are different nozzles available. So if you see on our Montana Gold line, not only do we have tons of brilliant colors, but there are many, many different nozzles that you just pop on the top to adjust the way that the paint comes out of the can. But I would also advise you to check into a couple of our already established videos that are live on our YouTube channel from an artist named Emily Farrell that's been doing some really fantastic work for us. She's really the expert in that area and by watching her live that's going to give you a whole lot of information about exactly how all of the nuance of that works. So definitely check those out. We'll post the links in this video so you can uh, find them easily. What are the pigments in the new American Journey watercolors? So we recently did a video where we featured um, several of the new American Journey watercolors that just came out in this year's catalog and they are gorgeous. They're beautiful. Check that video out if you're interested. But if you are ever looking for the pigment content of our paints, let me tell you how you find them. Go to the Cheap Joe's website. At the top in the search bar, we'll just simply put American Journey Moon Glow, hit enter. It's gonna pull up an individual product page for that specific color. You will scroll down to the bottom and you'll see some little tabs in a box, a rectangle that's at the bottom. It says additional info. Click on the additional info tab. It's gonna bring up all kinds of various technical information related to that color. Scroll down and there's a complete list of the pigment ingredients for any of the colors that you're interested in. New ones, existing ones, whatever it is that you need to know. It's all available right there on our website. So check it out. What is your favorite media or product? Well, I don't, I don't know that I have one exactly that's my, you know, favorite. Um, what do I use as go-tos all the time that I just absolutely don't feel like I can live without? A Kilimanjaro 300 pound bright white because I just love it. I can use it for, you know, the cold press is great because I can use it for graphite, watercolor, water soluble graphite. I also use acrylic on it. So it's kind of like my go-to. And since I hate stretching watercolor paper, as all of you know, I can skip that part just with uh, Kilimanjaro. I also use an Aquabee sketchbook all the time. That smooth consistency, you know, you can get cool details, but you can also put light washes in it and they come in all kinds of great sizes. I would say pigment micron pens all the time got them in, i carry them in my purse i have them all the time fact is click eraser yep all the time so those kinds of things are things that i feel like nah, i don't want to necessarily do without and gold fleece brushes i love those too so you know all kinds of cool stuff 
Let's see. Did you always want to be an artist? Yes and no, I would say. I, you know, I was kind of raised with this thought that like being an artist artist was like kind of an unrealistic, you know, life goal. So, you know, as I was growing up, after I got over my Jacques Cousteau phase, thinking I wanted to be a marine biologist who can't do math, it's problematic. So I then decided I was going to be an interior designer. Started college with that in mind, went to orientation, got into the program, and I, I was like, no, I just can't, you know, no, not dissing interior designers or whatever, but you don't know what you're like, and it's just not my flow, so, like, I was like, there's too many monogram tote bags in this room, I gotta go, uh, so, anyway, that was just not my thing, um, what I actually went to school for was, like, commercial art, um, so, there's a little bit of graphic design in there. There's a little bit of, you know, everything. My my actual concentration was in metal smithing and alloys. You know, <laughs> not big in drawing either. Um, but I also have, a, you know, uh, a minor in business marketing. So I kind of went the career way. I never really thought of myself as ever being, like, in a gallery and selling my work and, like, turning myself into a brand and stuff because it's just not who I am it's not my thing so that was that part of the artistic process was not part of my my thinking or you know career path ever so art yes artiste you know for you know galleries and selling no and then what things do you like outside of art well lots of stuff like lots of different things um what are my favorite things um to do pretty much anything it has to do with water um so i do a lot of kayaking a lot of boating um i strangely wouldn't know from looking at me but um i really like open water distance swimming yeah um and um recently got into ultra bar ballet again probably wouldn't have guessed that one but um so lots of different stuff that i like to do um, outside of art, um, you know, but art has always been a big, big thing. Um, and that was one of my dogs. He's kind of a big mouth. I call him a Labradont because he shouldn't be doing whatever he's doing. And his name is Mac and he has a big mouth. So, um, but anyway, hope this answers some of your questions. Uh, let us know if you have any other questions. We'll be happy to answer uh, them for you. If you do have specific requests for video content, questions that you like answered, please send them on. We're happy to address them as we can. Um, we sure appreciate the attention and the interaction and all you guys watching and uh, hope that you enjoy.